So in today's video, we are going to show you how you can get these budget Xeons off AliExpress, take them, get the turbos on them to all cores max multiplier. Now there are a few steps involved in this process. It's actually can be a bit confusing depending on which motherboard you go with. Now, I will be covering a lot of these X99 motherboards in reviews, I'll be doing a full roundup, but from my knowledge, they have different ways to update their BIOSes. And another thing is, this is the first step, you have to update the BIOS. It's crucial to take out what's known as the 6F2 microcode. If you don't take this out, you can kiss that V3 full turbo option goodbye. So, what we needed in order to do this is a USB bootable. I've got an eight gigabyte one here. I've also got an extra one, which I'll be using for the Machinist X99 board. You won't need this for the other AliExpress boards like the One and Z and also the Atomiter, but this step is unique to the Machinist X99 board because it has this special BIOS on board, uh, well, actually a newer BIOS called the uh, 128JV, which is an update over the BV which unfortunately in the JV, they've added some new security features. So there's only one particular way that you can update this BIOS. It's such a tricky thing. And I had to copy paste it basically from Russian into English because the Russian guys figured out how to do it. And God bless those Russian guys. They know their stuff. I mean, they go through all these special procedures, one version of AMI BIOS. And then also on top of that, they uh, managed to figure out that you got to do it twice, the same code, drop it in twice, and then it works, like amazing stuff. Anyway, that aside, we're going to need a few programs on this USB bootable in order for this to work. The first of which is if you're using not the machinist board and everything else, you're gonna need a BIOS program called FPTW, and it's a Windows updater, but it's okay. Like you're gonna be absolutely fine using this program in Windows. I haven't run into any problems, as long as of course, with usual precautions, make sure the PC is stable and you don't have any bloatware or malware before you do this update in Windows. The second thing we're going to need to do is get the v3.efi extract files and then copy them over to a Windows bootable UEFI install. This is one of the most important steps. If you don't do this right, you won't, again, just like the BIOS update, won't be able to get that full uh, V3 turbo unlock. And then after that, moving into the last step, we then have to update the uh, Windows and patch it with a genuine Intel.dll. After we've done all those three things, you can then just boot your PC up like any other PC and you've now got access to those all turbo boost clocks. And of course, on top of that, you've got some ridiculously good value for money in 2020. Let's start off this tutorial. Join me for the ride at Tech Yes City and let's find out how to get these things unlocked. And before we get onto the steps one, two, and three, it's important that we've got to do the preparation and that is making a Rufus bootable because it's the easiest program. I put it in the description below for you guys. So it's all part of the pack. And basically what you do now is you've got to make your USB bootable to what's known as FreeDOS. So you can put in some of these commands and you can copy things later on. So what I like to do is I like to get, I've got here an eight gigabyte, as I said before, I like to load in and make this a bootable, but also copy all the files necessary for this whole tutorial. So I'll load in all the folders with MM tool, the BIOS updates, as well as the uh, genuine intel.dll patch. And I'll put that all on this after I've made it a bootable. So in order to make this a bootable drive, all you do is open this Rufus program and then click the free DOS option and then just call it what you want. You can call it uh, V3 Turbo Boot Drive and then uh, click next, hit that up and then you're good to go. Now, another thing, after you make this bootable, we copy all the folders that we're gonna need for today's tutorial on there. That's generally what I do. But there's also another thing you need to do and that is copy the V.3 EFI files which will also be in a separate folder as well. So copy paste them across to this bootable uh, drive right here, but also when it asks you to copy over the original files, you have to select no, and then we're good to go for the next steps. Now we're at step one, and this step pertains to the boards like the Atomiters as well as the One and Zs. And so if you've got one of these boards, 
you're actually fortunate enough that you can quickly get this BIOS update done as well as back up your original BIOS and you won't have to rely on downloading any files off the internet. Though of course, for your convenience, just like step two, I'll put the BIOSes in the description below for you. So if you just want to quickly download them, then you can get ready to just do basically half a part in this step. So basically what we want to do now is we want to open up FPTW and then pretty much copy the BIOS that you've got on your PC and make a backup of this. And so you use the command, which I'm going to show on the screen here. So we type in the exe file and then we press space bar and then we call it what we want. And essentially what this will do is it'll now start reading the BIOS on the chip, save it. But after we're done with that, what we can do now is grab that .bin file and load it into the next program called mmtool. And so I've included this again in the description below, open up that image, and then we've got to go to the CPU patch place. And then what we want to do here is find the 6F2 microcode. If there's more than one of these, say for instance, if you're using, uh, I think some Asus motherboards and ASRock boards might have this uh, two of these. You want to make sure you delete the patch data on the 6F2 line. So you click, left click on that line of uh, microcode there and then you just go to delete patch data, select that, and then click apply. And then after that, it'll pretty much remove that micro code update from that BIOS. And so this is one of the most important steps as we said before, because we're now letting these other drivers that we're gonna install into the UFI install do the dictating on what these V3 turbos can go up to in terms of all cores. Though I will quickly interlude here, and I will say don't go out buying an engineering sample on the V3 Haswells and expect to get the performance that you're seeing in these videos that I'm putting out here on the channel because the ES samples, even though they still have that micro code exploit, they unfortunately don't have the turbo boost hard grained into the CPU itself. And so what this means is that even if you do this mod on engineering samples, they just have no turbo uh, clock to relate to. And since the quality samples, that's pretty much the pre-retail release samples, and also the retail samples, they carry the 6F2 microcode and the turbo multiplier and the exploit, they're able to then take away that microcode update and then boost to all cores. However, that aside, we've taken out the microcode update, we can now save image and then call this what you wanna call it. Say for instance, just call it x99turbo.bin. And then after this, we wanna go back now to the command prompt and open it as administrator and then go into that FPT BIOS file location, type in the exe file, type in the name of our bin. So in this case, it's gonna be x99 turbo and then put in the force command as you see on the screen here, hit enter and your BIOS should be able to update. And so this is the thing you'll see on the screen here is because we're using the machine as board, it's actually blocking us out due to the BIOS chip that they used in this particular motherboard. So what we're gonna do now is move over to step two, which uh, relates to the machinist board only. So if you don't have a machinist motherboard, you can skip this next step because we've now updated the BIOS on whatever motherboard you've come to the table besides the machinist in this tutorial. So doing this BIOS mod, I'm going to take you guys through it with the machinist motherboard. I feel like this board is going to be extremely relevant for a lot of people given its 70 USD price tag and its support for quad channel DDR4 memory and also support for native M.2 NVMe booting. So this board packs a lot of features for that price tag, which is impressive considering it's also got a thick, uh, I believe it's an eight layer PCB. So the build construction's good, the VRM's decent, and it's also got those added on features and USB 3 front out too. So quite a feature packed board. And so with that, this is one of the best value for money options. We're gonna go through one of the hardest things to get around though with this board, and that is simply updating the BIOS. So this motherboard, they're using a new JV chip BIOS on it, and it does have some write protections, and it is a little bit quirky to update. For instance, if you try and update this in Windows, you're gonna be met with error messages, and it's gonna keep spitting out error messages. And in the case of me uh, wasting a whole lot of time on this board, I tried using two different flash programmers, and they both didn't work, despite one of them saying that it actually flash programmed successfully. 
Uh, so if you wanna manually flash program this with a clip, then you will, I believe, need a latest and greatest flash programmer that's up to date with 2020 models of BIOS chips, or at least 2019 models coming out. Uh, though in this case, we're gonna use Aphidos. And Aphidos essentially, uh, there's only one version I found that worked. I tried the versions off the website, all were giving me error codes or just saying it was read and write protected. And I just could not update the BIOS. And even when I thought I had updated the BIOS in the end, it actually didn't update the BIOS. What we're gonna do now is uh, download the BIOS bin in the description below. So I'll put the links for two different BIOSes. And that's right, this is where it gets complicated with the Machinist X99 motherboard. There's two different BIOSes because they put two different BIOS chips on when they were shipping them out. I happen to have the eight megabyte version, but there's also a 16 megabyte version. And so in order to find out which version you have, you then have to type in Aphidos. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below for the version I'm using as well, and Rufus. So you have to make a bootable USB drive first off and then boot the PC from that USB drive. And then in the DOS command prompt, go to where you've stored Aphidos. So I've used uh, the drive called C drive uh, flash. And then inside that, I've got the Aphidos AXE file, and I've also got the uh, bin file for updating the BIOS. However, before I did this, I have to check what uh, BIOS I've got, what chip I've got. And so in order to do this, we type in Aphidos space, and then we type in the name. So I just called it testpilot.rom, and then space, slash o and now this will save a current image of our bios on the motherboard and so what we do after that is we then pull the mother the usb stick out go onto our main computer or another computer and just check the file size so it's either going to be uh, eight megabytes or it's going to be 16 megabytes in the case of mine as i said before i check here it's eight megabytes so i then download the eight megabytes updated bios and then i can go back into aphidos now and I'm ready to flash. And so this is the next step. So this is where you're gonna flash the new BIOS on that is missing that uh, 6F2 microcode update. And this is important. If you don't do this step, you cannot get the unlocked multipliers at all. So in order to do this, we type in Aphidos. So back to where I've installed Aphidos and uh, C drive uh, flash folder, Aphidos space, and we type in, I called it small. So this is what I called it, because it was two different BIOS sizes. I called it small.bin, and then you have to type in space slash G-A-N, or GAN, and then you hit enter. And it should now update the BIOS if you've done everything right. Now, once this is finished, I want you guys to actually do this one more time, because I did this, and on the first go, it just did not update the BIOS for some odd reason. So if you do this twice, then you should finally have the updated BIOS in there missing that micro code update. And how you can check this is like we did before, we can then do another backup. So we can call this last backup. So Aphidos space final backup dot ROM space slash O. And then we can load that into our main computer just quickly and check via our MM tool and load image and then just check in that CPU patch area that that code's missing. There should only be three uh, lines there. And if you, if you haven't successfully done it, you'll see four lines there with that 6F2 code. That'll still exist from 2018. If that's not existing anymore, then you've done it right. And you're now ready for the next step. And we're coming back now after a fresh install and after you've updated your BIOS, you are now ready for step two. And we can see here, we've got our boot override or our boot priority, which is Windows Boot Manager from the UEFI install. But if we go over to save and exit, we'll notice that there is a, another option down here and that is to boot off the UEFI U-Disk that we created. And so this now has a UEFI, essentially EFI boot that we made from Rufus and then we copied those EFI files over to the Rufus drive. So as soon as we hit this, it's gonna boot into what's known as shell. And when we do this, we wanna hit escape straight away. And so we're going to go escape before it goes with the startup.nash. Uh, I think it means startup.kevinnash, that old wrestler. But most important thing is up the top, 
you'll see FS0 column and then below the FS1 column. And if you don't see both these FS uh, uh, texts, then you've done it wrong. And you have to either go back and reinstall Windows as a UEFI and make sure, as we said before, that BIOS that Windows uh, Boot Manager is coming up first, or at least it's an option to do that. And second, uh, if it's not coming up, then there might be another problem, which I personally haven't come into whilst doing this mod. Anyway, once we're in shell, we can now get ready for the next steps of this process. Now the command we wanna first type is load, and then we wanna type in fs0 colon backslash, so make sure it's not a forward slash, and then v3.efi. So this is that EFI file that we copied before, and it's also allowed us to boot to shell. And we hit enter, and we should see the text v3 hyphen all turbo set. If you're not seeing this text, then you haven't done this properly. So this is one of the most important steps to drop in here. And then, because all the Xeons are different, essentially, you might see in some guides out there, you might see there's a different code for this uh, v3 EFI. It might be a different number, like, um, 771B4 or something like that. That just means it's pertaining to a different Xeon chip that that person's used. But you really wanna make sure that you see V3 hyphen all turbo set, and then you can continue to this next step, which is uh, CP, and then we can type in FS0 uh, colon backslash, and then V3 EFI dot EFI, and then space bar, and then FS1, colon backslash EFI backslash boot. And so what this is gonna do is gonna create a new folder on your Windows drive. This is your boot drive now. It's copying this V3 EFI file into your boot drive. And it should say copying okay. So it's made the new folder. It's now got the V3 EFI uh, turbo details. And so we're now ready for the last step in the shell command. And that is to type in BCFG spacebar driver space add and then zero space zero space fs1 colon backslash and then after this we will want to type in efi backslash boot backslash v3 dot efi and we've says uh, space and this is what you want to call it uh, v3 full turbo you can call it anything you want really but I'm just going to call it V3 full turbo and then hit enter and it should say target equals 0000, zero, zero, zero. and it should also say below that BCFG add driver 000, zero, 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 zero as zero and then we type exit and now we want to make sure if we've done this successfully or actually it'll continue on the windows but we want to reboot the system as um as soon as we can and now in the boot section, we should see here V3 full turbo. So this is that option we enabled before and it's all good to go. We can now proceed to uh, Windows and we're ready for the final step in order to get this uh, Xeon mod working. And now it's a time for step three, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, not three, three because we've just freed up all those megahertz on that Xeon. And the last final step is to basically install this patch in Windows, which modifies the genuine Intel.dll file. Now, the beauty of this is that it all comes in one Swift folder with one easily clickable executable. And all we have to do here is right click on this file and just open as administrator, click yes, and we're good to go. And with all that aside, you can now restart your PC for the final time and boot back into Windows and enjoy that all turbo core multiplier at the max turbo multiplier, bringing out so much more performance out of these Xeons, also making them so relevant for desktop enthusiasts. And I hope you guys enjoyed this full tutorial, but I will state some things to be careful of moving forward. And that is apparently if you uh, reset your BIOS, 
it can mess up the turbo update. So do be careful with this in that if you take your CMOS battery out or in the future, your CMOS battery runs dry and there's no power connected to the PC, then you could lose uh, the turbo boost multiplier and you may have to apply all these steps again. The second thing to be wary of is if you change your OS drive, then you have to make sure again that it's a UEFI uh, install and then do from step two and onwards. And that is apply the V3 EFI files and inject them into that UEFI install and then apply that genuine intel.dll mod and then you should be good to go again. However, all things aside, if you've got this all done and everything's working fine and you've got your power connected to your PC and your drive doesn't drop out, then you've got a gaming PC that is just incredible value for money. It's taken a few extra steps to get here. But when we look at these six and eight and 12 cores, you're just going to get phenomenal value for money, period. And the good thing about this is they have all those latest and greatest instruction sets and the power efficiency actually isn't that bad. And I'll tell you the best thing is the price of these Xeons is ridiculously good. Though your Xeons are all happy they're cheering your name, but you just can't hear it because they're cheering it in digital code. I will tell you something that can be cheered and that is the question of the day, which comes from Pure Sign. And they ask, uh, can you use non-ECC memory or do you have to use ECC RAM with this? And this comes from the previous video where we actually benchmarked the uh, six core and put it up to the test against the Ryzen 5 3600 and also the i5 9400F. Uh, spoiler alert, it did incredibly well. I'll put the link to that video up here if you haven't seen it, really good. Uh, this is why these things are just blowing me away all day, every day. Though back to the question at hand, no, you don't need ECC registered. You can use the normal unbuffered stuff, the cheaper stuff in this case, because DDR4 uh, unbuffered is a lot cheaper than the registered ECC as opposed to DDR3. It's the opposite story. Uh, but no, you don't need it. And in my video that I used uh, yesterday, we actually uh, just use unbuffered, just cheap off the shelf stuff, four sticks. I think two of them were crucial sticks and then two of them were some bangers I got off Aliexpress because I just wanted to test mixing and matching RAM and what the worst case scenario would be. And pretty much the worst case scenario, even on the RAM side of things, gives you great performance due to the quad channel memory that these possess. So there, yeah, hope that answers that question. And with that aside, of course, I will say though, you can still use ECC registered memory. In fact, there's a different versions of these that have the different code names. You'll know if it's this code name that appears as one that has support for DDR3 if you don't find it on the arc.intel website. Basically like the 2678, for example, that's uh, the V3, that's not on the Intel website. And what we know from that is it was made for someone like HP who requested these and had special requests from Intel. And then they put in a DDR3 controller for that special request. And that made those Xeons then pretty much the same as a 2680 V3, for example, but even better because it now supports DDR3, both unbuffered and both ECC registered memories. And so there's a lot to love about these things. They offer so much, really exciting times ahead of us. And if you guys wanna jump on board the Tech Yes train, then the sub button's down there, ring that bell. And if you enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also, if you've got any more questions or comments, be sure to drop them in the question comments section. Man, I don't know why I messed that up all the time, but be sure to drop it in the comments section below. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. This is the Tech Yes Xeon Man. Peace and out for now, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.